All right, yeah, let's get started. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, I would like to welcome you all to getting started with webinar today. Uh, my name is Harshwadan Chauhan, uh, and I'm part of the Habana Labs application team. And today with me, I have Greg and Mohit, also from the AE team, uh, and Pen Levkovich from the product team. And we are here to talk about getting started with Gaudi, specifically on AWS EC2 TL1 instance. All right, uh, so far as part of some rules, uh, this session has been recorded uh, specifically for your help uh, to make it so that you know you can view it later after day after this particular event. Uh, if you have any questions or issues, you can use the Zoom chat feature uh, to reach, reach out to us. Uh, the team here will try to respond them during the presentation, or uh, you know, I will try to read them on the screen. Um, as we go through the webinar, uh, at the end, we'll have a dedicated Q&A. All right, uh, so what's the goal today? Uh, this is the starting point for any developer who's looking to start migrating their models to Habana's Synapse AI software stack and run their model on Gaudi using PyTorch or TensorFlow. Uh, now we'll take uh, talk about AWS EC2 DL1 instance. So this particular uh, session today has been running on AWS uh, DL1 instance. Um, we are going to use the Habana uh, GPUs, which are the uh, Habana HPUs, which are the Habana processing units, and the whole AI software stack that is called the Synapse AI. Uh, and I'm going to discuss about the hardware as well as the software side. Uh, in a bit, um, I'm going to show you how easy it is to migrate uh, a simple PyTorch model on Habana GPU instances, uh, HP instances, um, and run a model uh, on eight card DL1 instance. Uh, that means, you know, unleashing the whole power uh, of our HPUs uh, using the distributed data, data parallel feature. As well as, you know, we are going to, at the end, of, we are going to be like few. Uh, a simple uh, stable diffusion inference example, uh, and you know we'll wrap up with some questions. All right. Uh, so as you can see over here in this particular picture, uh, this is the DL1 instance. Uh, this is a fairly new instance uh, on an AWS, and it has eight Gaudi cards. Uh, you can see here that. Uh, this this is the ben this is for the benefit of you know a really high performance DL1 instance uh, that is designed for 40% better price performance and current GPU based instances available at AWS. So a very high performance instance with a lower cost and great price performance. Uh, now you can notice over here that you know there are like red lines which are connecting to eight Gaudi instances in this particular DL1 instance. Uh, and these particular Gaudi processors are fully connected with each other. So, you know, each Gaudi uh, processor is connected to the other Gaudi uh, processor. And these are being connected. Uh, you know, we have like uh, all of our Gaudis are integrated with a 100 gigabit ethernet connection. Uh, so on the board, like every single Gaudi uh, is connected to every single other Gaudi, which, and then you can see they are connected to two dedicated CPUs and the other net, uh, dedicated networking. So one thing is that, that, you know, the AWS has really put together is a really, really high performance network of 400 gigabit networking and high speed interconnect to get outside of the box uh, so that you know you can take advantage of multi node distributed training and this has been available with 4 tb of local storage uh, all right so you know uh, in the in in the one one thing i forgot to mention over here is that folks who are interested in taking the advantage of DL1 instance can visit this particular website. All you need to have is, you know, AWS account and you can start and 
run a DL1 instance because this is available to all the public uh, and being open to everyone. Uh, and what we have heard from AWS is like, this is a very high performance instance. So what we can do is, you know, let's jump to a live demo. Like, you know, let's look at uh, running a particular model on a Gaudi uh, instance. And uh, we can do this in like less than five minutes. So here I have a Jupyter notebook, which is running on a DL1 instance. And uh, what I can show you over here is an HLSMI command. So HLSMI command helps you to get whatever we have available over here. So you can see that we have like eight dedicated Gaudi processors and for us, for today for us to use, and we are gonna run different models on them. Uh, let's, let's begin with uh, DL1 workshop. So as you remember at the beginning of this particular video, I didn't want to mention about that today we are going to use the DL1 workshop. I'm going to, you know, mention this again, that if you go to our Habana AI page, there's the DL1 workshop repository and all the Jupyter notebooks are available. Uh, they are all live. They are all up and run, And, you know, you can run them on the DL1 instance. So I'm just going to start with a basic migration. And over here, we have a quick start Jupyter notebook. So this particular Jupyter Notebook's aim is to help you understand that, you know, how you can bring up your own simple model and migrate it on a uh, DL on, on a, uh, and start running it on a Habana processor. And so what, what we are going to do over here is that uh, you will see uh, at the end of the day is how simple it is uh, to run a particular model on uh, the Habana processing units. Now over here, we have taken a very simple model. This is a linear model uh, and uh, we're gonna run this particular notebook. So let's get started. So we're gonna start with some uh, simple uh, installing of libraries. So I just install them over here, uh, run through this. And over here, you see that I'm what I'm trying to do is import few of those standard libraries from PyTorch. So this cell does that. Uh, now, this is the most important part of this particular notebook. So, you know, let's just take a minute over here. So what this, you know, basically this particular cell is trying to do is that we are trying to import uh, a Habana framework torch core library. So what we have done is that, you know, we have made a simple change to this particular tutorial to enable uh, and run this model on Gaudi. And as part of that, you know, we release a specific version of PyTorch uh, that is included in our Docker images and has some enhancement, uh, which are required to ensure uh, that we are running uh, at performance and running properly on PyTorch. So in this particular case, we are going to import the Habana framework, as you can see from this particular cell, uh, and set the device to HPU. Uh, so, you know, let me run this and yeah, right over here. So what will happen over here is that once we set our device to HPU, we are making sure that we are pinning down a workload specifically on our Habana's HPU and, you know, making sure that it doesn't run on CPU or GPU. All right, so let's move forward. So over here for this particular example, uh, in this model, I'm gonna use the Fashion MNIST dataset. So all this cell helps us is download the dataset for training and test. Uh, I'm gonna move past that. All right, so over here, what I, this particular cell helps us to do is, you know, I'm uh, assigning the train and the test data loader and uh, yeah. Let's move. These are very simple steps. Uh, and yeah, let's let's move on to, you know, creating of a model. So as you can see over here, uh, this particular cell helps us to define the train, uh, define the model over here. So this is gonna be, a, as I mentioned, very simple model. I'm taking a 28 by 28 sets of images from the MNIST data set. And uh, this is a very linear model in, in which I have value activation layers. 
and at the end of the day, uh, you know, a 10 uh, output, which is what this model creates. So let's run and create this model. All right, so this is something to notice over here is that now I'm dedicatedly using HPU device, as well as you can see that what our Habana PyTorch bridge does is, uh, over here sets up a bunch of environment variables. This is for your you know, advantage that you can see all the environment that have been set over here are actually displayed. And then moving on to the more standard part. So over here, we do uh, assign our loss as well as the optimizer, which is the stand, uh, stochastic gradient descent. All right, so as we move forward, uh, so this particular cell is an important cell. Uh, there are a few things that I would like to highlight. So as you can see from you know, this particular train cell, that uh, all we are doing here is calculating our loss. Uh, there's the optimizer step. Uh, but what I would like to highlight over here is that we have introduced a math step after the loss, as well as after the optimizer step. Now, uh, the Gaudi works in, in, in a very certain way that, you know, this, the, the mode is, over here, the mode is the lazy mode. Um, you know, which is allowing the Gaudi to collect ops uh, only while, you know, it runs these particular steps and when needed. Uh, so instead of, you know, running uh, every single step every time, uh, which can cause like the slowdown in the performance, we are only aggregating the certain ops and running when needed. So this ensures that uh, we are more efficient in our operation rather than having to run every single operation in real time. Uh, so at the end of the last step, as you can see, and the optimizer step, uh, we run this particular math step. So right over here, I'm gonna run this particular cell. And then we move to the test function. So we define the frame, we define the test, and that's it. Uh, I move on to the cell where I'm going to train this model for five epochs, um, and yeah, let's let's you know run this. As you you know you see over here that how fast the training goes. Uh, we are running for five epochs, uh, and as you can see, my accuracy keeps improving after each epoch, and my loss starts decreasing and yeah we are almost there that's it done uh, you can see over here like you know how fast with the power of gaudi did we train a very simple model um, and we were able to uh, showcase that you know how in like few simple steps uh, from this particular tutorial uh, that I have taken from PyTorch website uh, and have added only just a few lines of code, uh, I'm able to run my model on Gaudi. Um, and I hope, you know, this is what particularly this tutorial will help you to understand. Um, and, you know, we are already up and running, as you can see, um, and the accuracy as well as loss, as mentioned over here. Uh, I'm going to go back to the tutorial and, you know, summarize that what we actually did over here. Um, so the main thing over here was to understand that Habana provides its own uh, set of libraries as part of the, Py Py the PyTorch package that it brings. And it, it's important to import the Habana framework uh, torch.core library over here. And uh, the most interesting part is that after the loss and the optimizer step, we need to uh, import the mark steps. Uh, and then uh, we need to make sure that we are pinning down our workload uh, on specifically HPU. So, you know, we do assign the device specifically on the HPU. All right, for folks who work on developing models on TensorFlow, uh, we haven't forgot you. Uh, 
migrating a model on TensorFlow is something that Habana provides as well. So uh, as you can see over here, the, the model migration uh, on, is even simpler uh, you know, on TensorFlow. Um, in this particular case, the Habana software and library uh, are already part of the broader TensorFlow distribution. So we are adding the Habana module, as you can see over here. And uh, what we are doing is we are calling the Habana module function. Um, and this particular main TensorFlow based, this function helps to uh, TensorFlow based model to make sure that model is pushing all the workloads on Habana HPU. All right. So I'm you know, going to talk a little bit more about uh, you know, the use cases as well as uh, what we are actually focusing inside Gaudi. Uh, we are currently focusing on three main areas. Uh, one is the computer vision, which is you know, the home uh, of the AI, the deep learning. Uh, all the standard models which are being part of computer visions are available in our model, uh, like the model repository. Um, and the second one is the NLP. Uh, of course, like, you know, not only the standard models, but like large, large uh, language model. Uh, so we do have like examples of uh, BERT 5 billion parameters, uh, deep speed Megatron, uh, 13 billion parameters, uh, GPT-based models and more. Um, and this covers like, you know, all uh, natural language use cases. As well as uh, I can, uh, the third part over here is the multimodal. Um, and you know, uh, one thing is that uh, it's, it's part of that is like stable diffusion where you know you can input a text and get output as like visuals or pictures. Um, so these are the areas that you know will co continue to contribute as well as innovate in the coming years. Um, and you can find all these particular models on our model references page, which you know I'm going to talk in the next slide. All right, so we did, uh, you know, a small example uh, in this particular demo, uh, but to unleash the power of like real world examples, uh, we have a set of different models right over here. So if, you, if you're gonna go into them again on Habana AI GitHub uh, page, over there you can find model references, uh, our repository, which includes all set of models right from computer vision based. You can see here models in the area of PyTorch as well as TensorFlow. Uh, models in the area of natural language processing uh, over here, uh, as well as other areas like uh, recommendation system, audio, as well as the, the generative models, uh, where specifically stable diffusions are all present over here. If you look over here in the natural language processing, we do have like, you know, as I mentioned earlier, Megatron deep speed, uh, deep speed with five, about five billion parameters, about fine tuning, about pre-training. You know, let's, let's go into one of these and, you know, uh, I want to explain a little bit more in depth. So as you come over here, uh, you will find list of all detailed steps you need to run a particular model. And this is applicable across all models and you know, all, all, across all the different areas. So you can find like a detail about what this particularly a model is, how you can download the data set, um, how you can set up your whole instance, as well as uh, you, know, you, you can install all the requirements that are being needed over here, as well as the examples, uh, the train examples. These examples are like real examples which would help you to run the particularly model with different variations, um, which you can see right all up over here. So what I'm gonna do over here is I'm gonna run up this particular, since we are here in BERT fine tuning uh, and give you a demo of this particular model. So I'm gonna close this particular Jupyter notebook and go to DL1 workshop, uh, go into PyTorch BERT, and about fine tuning. What I'm just gonna do is, I'm gonna restart the kernel and clear all the outputs. It'll start fresh. So, yep, yeah, so what this, so this particular Jupyter Notebook does is, 
so we have taken our model uh, from a pre-trained model um, that has been fully trained on Wikibook Corpus data set. And, but in this particular case over here, we are doing the both fine tuning example uh, where we update the model weights uh, with our squad data set. Uh, so remember that fine tuning is a, actually a really, really great way to cuss for like the customized data set. This data set could be like your data set or customer based data set and update your model uh, with your own data set. Uh, and thus fine tuning is a much simple and cost effective way uh, that could give you and your data set in line with the fine tuning process, uh, given that you know the data set is in line with fine tuning process of the original data set. Um, so yeah, let's get started with this particular note, Jupyter notebook. So I'm gonna run the cell, I'm gonna go to the root. So here, this particular step helps us to clone the model reference repository. Uh, so as we did talk, just talk about like how all these models are available in our model reference repository. Um, I'm gonna uh, set up like bunch of uh, other important things, which is like setting up my Python path, going specifically into the BERT uh, fine tuning repository. So over here, you can see, so this is based on the hugging, uh, hugging face uh, BERT uh, fine tuning, uh, which hugging face has enabled. I'm gonna install a bunch of libraries which are needed over here. Uh, so just these cells represent that. I'm also gonna install the transformers because these are being enabled by hugging face directly right from up over there. All right. So now you can see that uh, we are already done with the complete setup and ready to run uh, a fine tuning process over here with the squad data set. Uh, I would like to highlight a couple of things over here. Uh, these are all the set of bunch of parameter values. Uh, these are already been, uh, we have taken these particular examples right from our model reference repository. Uh, model reference repository does give up all these examples, which are you know the best settings which you can run. Uh, but one is free over here to modify any set of parameters that they want. And specifically over here, we do provide a flag, uh, the use HPU. So what this particular flag does is that uh, it helps you to specifically pin down our model on HPU. You can see right up over here. Um, and yeah, so let's, let's go ahead and run this particular model. Now you can see up over here that you know this model has started running. Um, now this is going to take some time. Uh, you know, meanwhile I'm just going to go back and talk a little bit more about the hardware. Um, now you can see from this particular picture that uh, this is the core depiction of our hardware. So now let's remember uh, Gaudi itself is not a GPU. Uh, it's a dedicated ASIC designed from ground up and exclusively focused upon uh, deep learning models for training and inference. Um, it is designed to be cost-effective and efficient for these workloads. Um, it has eight TPC uh, cores and matrix multiplication engine, which you can see right up from over here. Um, and uh, it gives you like, a, uh, like, like four high bandwidth memory devices uh, which is which give you a speed up to like 32 gigabytes of uh, memory and over one terabyte of uh, memory um, that we are taking the advantage of all those kind of models, which are small models, large models, and all different kind of workloads. And one thing that is like really interesting uh, and unique about this device is the integrated Ethernet uh, on the chip. Uh, so, you know, as we have mentioned earlier in the presentation, the DL1 instance has eight cards and all of them are like interconnected uh, using this onboard 100 gig gigabits of Ethernet. So, you know, like instead of having the whole overhead of sending this workload to an external PCI based networking device, everything right, happens like right, right up over here on, on the dial. 
Um, so this basically helps to drive the efficiency uh, for cost and efficiency for communication across uh, multi-node multi -node workloads. Um, now over here we have like 10 ports and uh, 10 of them are intercard for, used for like for intercard communication and uh, three additional ports uh, can be used to go across a switch or like other nodes depending upon the configuration. So uh, yeah, this is specifically uh, what our software, uh, so, sorry, our hardware looks like. Um, but also I want to focus upon the software side, like the whole software suite. Um, so as you can look from this particular picture, the name of our software suite is the Habana of Synapse AI. And uh, it is an overarching uh, software stack. And we have designed this for both training and inference across all the set of products that we have. Uh, so running this on Gaudi on AWS, or if you run on Gaudi 2 on developer cloud or Greco for inference, all our software uh, and models uh, and the software stack is used for the product line. Um, so, you know, you do not need to modify or make changes to your model uh, to run anywhere on Habana products. Um, it is integrated for both PyTorch as well as TensorFlow. So, uh, you know, as, as earlier, like, you know, I showed you how is it to, is it easy to migrate a model, um, which is based on uh, architecture like TensorFlow or PyTorch uh, and how you can bring it onto Gaudi. Um, so here, you know, if you look upon, this is the framework integration layer uh, right up over here. And uh, what it does is like this framework integration layer on the bridge that takes command from TensorFlow or PyTorch um, and modifies them to the lower graph compiler uh, and also uses our Habana communication libraries. So, you know, which it can handle all the all reduced and all gather functions uh, for multi node uh, and multi card communication. And it further, you know, runs down right up to our hardware. Uh, now, you know, this is all happening under the hood. Uh, a user doesn't need to worry or, you know, need to do anything over here. But, you know, we still have rich set of uh, performance optimization kernel, uh, right? present up over here. So our graph compiler and our Habana communication libraries take advantage of that. Uh, now, if folks like the customers, you know, like you, if you wanna have like your own set of kernels uh, optimized for fine tuning and performance, then we do have options for that as well. And uh, at the end of the day, uh, you know, like all these, uh, features are like available on the Docker images, uh, which are on AWS Marketplace or the Habana's Vault. And uh, today we are running a PyTorch Docker-based image, uh, which includes like all these information. So yeah, we have a basic AMI running a PyTorch image and uh, a PyTorch image on the Docker. All right, so. Let me just go back to the model over here, which you know we were running, and let's look at uh, yeah the output. Uh, if you scroll down up over here again, these are the set of parameters that are being defined, as you can see up over here. So this is the place where you know my loss starts decreasing as you know once I'm training for fine tuning and my rate of learning. Right, you can see up, up over here. Um, so for every epoch that's going on, and at the end of the day, right up over here, you can see my performance wherein, you know, I have like 107.2 samples per second. And this, like, you know, this just took around like almost two minutes. So we were able to like finish this, uh, almost like in one under like two minutes. So do you see like how cool this is? Uh, we do take up like a huge BERT model that's been trained and just as a part of fine tuning, we can take up any data set uh, of our choice and, you know, do the fine tuning on these particular models and uh, take the power of Gaudi 
like how easy and uh, you know uh, interesting this was uh, training a particular so fine tuning a particular model on a gaudi in uh, card all right now as part of like the whole potential like you know if you want to establish and see uh, what a gaudi can do is uh, we can show you a distributed workload example where we would take the advantage of all the eight cards uh, as well as um, as i promised you a fun example uh, towards inference side using stable diffusion um, so at this point you know i would like to hand it over to my uh, colleague mohit uh, who will walk you through these particular interesting demos uh, over to you mohit hey thanks sarfan uh, just a quick reminder to everyone yeah, you are welcome to use the q and a section of the zoom uh, chat to ask your questions um, we'll be answering them side by side the panelists are here to answer all your questions so yeah let me share my screen all right uh, i guess uh, harsh you'll have to stop your sharing only then it's allowing me to share harsh can you stop your screen share Okay, great. Now it's letting me share my screen. Here it goes. All right. So we're going to look at uh, uh, stable diffusion uh, inference on Gaudi. And uh, as you know, stable diffusion is very popular these days. So we have a quick demo for you. And I'm going to run through that. Same thing, we're running this in a AWS EC2 instance, HPU. Uh, uh, same same instance, just like Harsh's, as he's shown before. So I'm going to start running this notebook, but we are only going to do inference on this part. Um, I've already cloned the model references. This is also currently part of our model references. You can find this demo on our GitHub, Habana AI GitHub. So uh, I've, here's the path. I go in there. I'm setting the environment variables, which are needed for the script. And I'm running the uh, pip installs and all the requirements that are needed for this to run, for stable diffusion to run. And in this next cell here, um, we are going to have to download the model checkpoints because since we are doing inference, we need the model checkpoints for stable diffusion. And these can be found on Hugging Face. I have the link here in the demo. You can find this demo also, this Jupyter Notebook also on our GitHub. I've already downloaded this offline, so you can. I'll just show you where it's currently at. You can see the checkpoint is here in this directory. And now, uh, since this is an image to text generation, sorry, text to image generation, all you need to do is enter a prompt. And I'm going to say, a very simple prompt, parse is running to the sunset. Right, that's my input prompt. And here we are gonna run this uh, script with this input prompt. And that should generate images for us using this prompt. So let's do that. As you can see, this is the Python command I use. This is my script, text to image .py. Here's my prompt. And there's a bunch of settings here, which you can play around with. You're gonna get four images, since I've selected n samples as four. And uh, you can have, have the, you can uh, you can play around with the quality of those with, with these other switches. Uh, as you can see, we're targeting the HPU device. It's, so it's running in parents on the Gaudi and not the CPU. So this is the output from the script model itself. Here you can see the Habana related logging information and the script is running here. So it takes around a minute to generate four images, which is not too bad. So we'll just have to wait for a second, for a few seconds, and then we can see it progress. <clears throat> Uh, 
All right, so we are very close to finishing up here. Once it begins, it, it's really fast. And then, like I said, it takes a minute to process four images. We're going to be able to see the output very soon. So now it says your samples are ready. And now I have this visualizer. So I'm just gonna view, view the samples, the output. And there you are. So my prompt was horses running in the sunset. And it's generated this beautiful high quality images here. And that's the power of stable diffusion on Gaudi. And that was this demo. So moving on. Uh, we also have another demo, which is talking about distributed training. So uh, currently, the, the previous demo I was showing, it was running on a single HPU processor. Now we have multi-card training also enabled. And here I'm going to do a quick uh, ResNet image classification demo using all eight HPUs. Uh, a quick uh, hack that I use, a quick trick, if you could say is I go to my command prompt or my terminal and I run this command, which Harsh has already shown you, HLSMI, that's Havana Lab System Information, to show that none of the cards are busy or all cards are re empty. And now once we start this script, you'll begin to see all eight cards getting occupied together. So this next script, I was going to use Habana Mix Precision. And uh, Habana Mix Precision is a form of, uh, is a technique where you reduce the precision of the data that you're operating on, of the ops, and uh, that helps to improve performance by a lot. Uh, you're sacrificing a bit of accuracy, but it's in that you're getting a lot of more performance out of it. Since accuracy is not really uh, a, a, a very high requirement, you can sacrifice a bit of it to get better performance, saving in time and cost. So uh, this part here, it's talking about what all are the steps you need to initiate uh, distributed training. So you can take any script and make it run on eight Gaudi cards using these three simple steps. First one would be to initiate the HCCL library using DDP package. We are using distributed data parallel uh, PyTorch package. Since we are using distributed data to parallel package, we need a distributed data sampler. And uh, with that, we also need distributed data parallel uh, PyTorch model initial initialization. And have, that's how you do it here. I've laid out the steps here, very basic steps, few lines of code in the script. You can modify any model using these steps. And voila, you will have uh, a fully uh, distributed model ready to go. So that was the initialization for the communication library. Here you have the distributed sampler. Um, you just pass the data set to it and it the torch automatically creates a distributed sampler for you. And then you use a model, which is again uh, wrapped around in this distributed data parallel uh, torch API, and that enables it to run on multi-cards together. So again, like for the script, we need to set the environment variables, bring that here. And uh, this script is currently a part of the PyTorch computer vision repo. So you go in there. And uh, uh, we, we, we're gonna run this on a very simple C for 10 data set, very small images. Uh, to do that, I need to enable this patch. That this patch is going to basically uh, copy all the, all the data. <clears throat> all right, so let me see. I'm in the wrong here. So yeah, let me show you the patch, what it does. This patch, it simply applies, uh, currently our training script is written in such a way that it accepts input from the user. Uh, we expect you to give it the data set as, as a folder. But for this demo, uh, I'm going to not use that part of the code and I'm gonna enforce uh, the C for 10 dataset download. And that's how, this is how you do it using the Torch Vision API. It's a standard dataset. It's available directly from Torch Vision. So we're going to do this and then 
run our training script. And this is how my training command looks like. Uh, we need to set a few environment variables and uh, we need to, I'm using the MPRN library to enable uh, distributed part. So this part here that I highlighted is just telling the system that, hey, I need to run this in a distributed fashion and I'm using N equal to eight, which means eight devices. And uh, this is the original command for my training. This is how you would run this on a single device. But here I'm telling it to run it on multi-device. And for that, this is extra, uh, this is the extra part of the command that I need to introduce. So I will wrap this up in a shell script and I'm just gonna run this shell script. <clears throat> As you can see, uh, this is the uh, HCCL library and all those initializations happening initially. And we have running this in a distributed fashion. So you'll see all the ranks being listed. Each rank is a HPO card, HPO card processor. And it's downloading the CPAR 10 data set right now. And once that happens, uh, it will start training using this tra uh, data set. It will distribute this data set across the cards. Each model will have its, each card will have its own copy of the model and then they'll start to do the training. All right, so it says data set not found or corrupted. Yes, I remember. Uh, this is a common problem in Jupyter Notebooks. You just need to restart the kernel. Uh, the first time it happens, I can try to run it again. I think this will run the second time. It should not be wrong. All right, let's go through this again very quickly this time. That has already been applied. Oh yeah, the trick, I have a pen sleeve. Sometimes the cards are stuck like this, you can see. You have to kill the card, they kill the process in the card. Okay, so this is the process ID for this card, 2870. I'm gonna have to do that. And I'll check again, make sure my cards are all clear or I start the demo again. All cards are clear. Let's see, clear my notebook. and run this again. Okay. This time, it still says can't find the card. Oh, there it is. Hmm. That's strange. Sure, I've uh, worked the card. Let me just close this one thing and restart the whole thing. All right. Uh, let me check if I have anything else running. I have some data loader related stuff stuck there. I'm going to do that. Right. Let's check again. All right. Uh, I have some more processes. Here we go. There we go. Right. 
is running. All my cards are clear. This is always a good idea to do the business step before running a long training process. Let's start the script again. Cache has been applied. And this ratio should go next time. Great. So here we see it's, uh, picked up everything correctly. It's picking, taking the loading data, created the samplers, created the model. You'll see eight times the logging output of a single process because all eight cards are logging at the same time. And I'll show you again. Currently, before restarting the script, it was all empty. No, there was nothing running. But now, since it's processing across all eight cards, You'll see all eight cards are busy. So very simply using a very few API calls, we have modified our single uh, single card training script into a uh, multi-distributed training script. And uh, very soon it should show you uh, the output of the data and the training process would continue as usual. So, that is all I have for, for now. Uh, Parash, if you'd like to take over. Meanwhile, we'll help you answer the Q&A. Thanks. Stop share. Just a moment, folks. Let me share my screen. All right. Um, so yeah, uh, I hope that you know you enjoyed uh, different demos that we presented over here, uh, depicting how, starting from like you know how you can migrate a model uh, from uh, a very simple model uh, on Habana processing unit, and then uh, walking you down to a fine tuning based model as well as uh, unleashing the full potential of Gaudi with uh, eight cards as well as like an inference model. Um, now, you know, I wanna leave you folks with some more information uh, over here, as you can see that there are a few uh, details that, you know, I would like you to get familiarized with. So the one thing is our developer website, uh, which is right up over here, uh, the developer.habana.ai. Uh, if you come down up over here, you would get everything that we did just talk about. Um, uh, you can see different resources, uh, what large scale models that we you know have over here, the system and software installation details, um, a detailed table dis descript uh, showing up a proper description of all the models that we have in our model references and their performance, um, as well as uh, other useful information like white papers and uh, other updates that have been coming uh, from Kabanas and. Uh, so, you know, please do check out this particular website and uh, I hope you would find that useful. Um, the other thing that, you know, which is interesting over here is the documentation. I know there we have covered very basic things over here, but there are a lot more details which uh, any developer can go through uh, right from like, you know, starting and migrating your models. Uh, and this is actually applicable to both PyTorch as well as uh, TensorFlow. So, you know, you can come up over here, uh, visit all the documents, which like properly depicts each and every steps. Uh, I'll just show you one quick thing over here, like the PyTorch, so the getting started. So, you know, you can see every all the details that we talked about right up over here, as well as much more complicated things, which are like, you know, profiling and you know how you can profile your models uh, using both uh, PyTorch as well as TensorFlow and a lot of other details. 
So yeah, please do check out these particular uh, documentation website. And uh, I, I, I would like to emphasize it again, the, our model garden repository, which is right up over here. So if you visit our Habana AI web page, uh, GitHub page, uh, that will right up over here, it's been model references uh, repository where you can find list of all the models that we have enabled. Uh, these models do get added up. Uh, you know, we do keep releasing new models uh, as we go forward. Uh, so yeah, please do check out this particular repository and um, about this particular workshop. So I know you folks are interested uh, towards getting uh, uh, a recorded session. So, you know, you can always visit up, up over here in the live events. Uh, like once you go come up to the Habana developer page, you can go up, up, up over here, events and webinars. So under the events and webinars, you will find up like all the other videos that we have, as well as like, you know, the new video that will post up over here. So yeah, please do check out that. And yeah, here's the content to like AWS Marketplace. So, you know, you can go up over here, you can find uh, the image that we did use up. Uh, so, you know, you can find the Habana space AMIs uh, you, you can use on the, the EC2 DL for DL1 instance. Um, and also like this particular web page, which would help you to get started on DL1 instance that we were running today. Uh, you can start a Jupyter notebook, a terminal, and you know start training however you would like. Uh, and yeah, at the end of the day, uh, this is the most like you know our feedback uh, is important part of any organization. So uh, similarly, you know we would like to have your feedback. Uh, so, you know, you can come up over here, forum.habana.ai, uh, and here you would find uh, one of us or anybody from our team member uh, responding to your queries, your questions, or any feedback, you know, any suggestions, um, any errors, uh, or any interesting thing that you have observed either from today or from our website or from our repository. You can post up, up over here, uh, you know, reach out with general queries or anything related to your own training that you have been doing on our HPUs. And, you know, you find something interesting or you want to report something, uh, please use up, use this particular forum to report about that. Uh, yeah, I'm going to just, you know, open up for, you have a few, few more minutes for Q&A. Uh, you know, I would like to uh, open up uh, if you know you have you folks have any other questions let us know on the chat uh, you know we are uh, listing you folks over there uh, you know we can uh, always answer your queries over there yeah I'm just gonna you know uh, wait over here for a minute or two uh, to see that you know if you have any more questions uh, use the chat feed feature and uh, we'll respond to you over there Harshbridan, let's look at uh, Evelyn's question about PyTorch inference. Yeah. So just a moment. Yeah. So if running PyTorch inference on Gaudi, do we always need to import following packages? Uh, what does this part do, Habana, uh, import Habana uh, load module? Yeah, so uh, yes, we do need to, uh, you know, import this particular package uh, whenever you are running a particularly a model on uh, Habana. So right up over here. So right, right up over here. So, uh, you had to do it for the very first time, uh, you know, in your particular model, like wherever your uh, model definitions has been defined in your training script. And what did this particularly do is that, you know, uh, I think so I did mention this about earlier that it imports like all the Habana modules, which are being uh, provided to you as part of uh, the bigger TensorFlow uh, software that we are. Uh, so we do have like the, our own TensorFlow framework that has been defined and provided to you as a package inside the uh, uh, in, in, inside the uh, Docker image. So it would help you to load this particular model. So what will happen is uh, the uh, from this particular API, the TensorFlow uh, package that we provide, it would load up the Habana load module specifically, 
and it would help you to specifically pin down your model on the uh, Habana, the HPU processing unit. Uh, so uh, that's what this is currently doing. Now, this is an overall explanation that I can give. Deep down, what is it is helping you to do is uh, what we went down through this particular whole chart that it brings down, you know, it does the communication. Uh, sorry, I'll bring up the software stack. It does the communication with the TransferFlow framework and uh, helps to run the graphs uh, in a specific manner uh, so that, you know, we can take the whole, we can take the advantage of the whole optimization and helps your workload uh, to run specifically on the HPU. So that's what is beneath or under, underneath these particular uh, functions that we have imported and you know that should help you uh, by importing these particular modules. Also like if interested you can definitely go and check out our uh, uh, documentation as I mentioned there are like multiple functions that have been sub called through this uh, you will find like you know a detailed explanation as well as uh, an understanding like you know how does this whole uh, our framework works through. Uh, and I hope that, you know, you would be benefited through that. Uh, I see no more other questions. Folks, we are exactly on time now. And, you know, I would like to thank you all for, you know, attending this particular you know, webinar. Uh, please. Uh, look out for all the other uh, details that we had mentioned up over here, as well as the GitHub repositories that we highlighted. And I hope you enjoy uh, this particular webinar. Uh, happy training on uh, Habana processing it. Thank you, folks. <laughs>